just because colleagues here at Nedes on site uh, can then go to uh, make it for lunch. And then we're gonna probably have some informal also gatherings here in Nedes. I'll be also free to write on that WhatsApp group and uh, maybe you can have lunch or dinner all together and just uh, chat about what we want to do next year. But you know, we uh, we planned this session uh, for a couple of weeks before Addis, and the idea was to discuss a little bit about the sustainability of the NRIs. Uh, so maybe in the next couple of minutes, we could orient our comments really toward concrete actions that could be done from the side of you, from the side of the secretariat, but also broader from the side of the donors to the NRIs on the international level, but also on regional and local levels, who's missing in those actions and how do we reach them. And then another part was uh, about contributing to the current processes which are underway on the international scene. One is Global Digital Compact for Cetaceans. Some of the NRIs already took initiative there and they're preparing organized uh, response to the GDC. I think uh, Eurodig, I saw Italian IGF as well. And there is also VISIS plus 20 consultations coming our way. I think that's also extremely important for us. Informally, I'm glad Marcus is here. We had a couple of uh, informal chats, but I know Marcus will allow me to share this. We were really discussing in the context of the VISIS plus 20 and everything that has changed or, or everything that's been achieved from the origin of VISIS until today, probably the biggest achievement relates to the NRIs in the IGF context, because everything is organic, everything is growing in terms of numbers, but most importantly, in terms of the quality. And I refer primarily to the fact that the NRIs are really much, much more about one, two or three days annually uh, of their annual meetings. There are many capacity development initiatives that are associated with the NRIs. I often cite Barak and Kenya and IGF and your uh, collaboration with the parliament there. I think I was using you everywhere as a case of really excellent practice that exists. And I hope that we can all learn from that and maybe follow that example. So with that, uh, I wish to welcome also our online colleagues. We'll keep this very, very short. We will hear a few inputs from the room in Addis and then from you in Zoom. Special welcome to our Bangladesh remote hub. Uh, thank you to Bubon and other colleagues organizing this collective participation from Bangladesh and there are also representatives here in person. So the floor is open. The first question is about the sustainability. We would like to hear concrete um, action points that could go maybe into the report and later orient the NRI's work next year about how to make the NRI's more sustainable. I don't of course refer just to the financial sustainability or the financial segment but also speak about the uh, process sustainability, program sustainability relevant to the local, but also regional and international uh, political discourse. The, the floor is yours if you have any inputs and I'll keep an eye on Zoom. I'll give Cassandra here the floor. Whatever, whatever feels easier for. Hello? Okay. I put it here as the open mic so everyone can use it. Okay. Okay, I'm an engineer. <laughs> but this. Good skills, Sandra. It doesn't work. Okay, yeah. maybe it works like this. Um, no, no, it no. doesn't. <laughs> okay. Um, what I um, would like to suggest or encourage other NRIs basically is that um, um, I would like to share the experience from the European IGF where we are um, organizing a stakeholder consultation on the Global Digital Compact at the moment. And um, I do believe that uh, participating in global processes is something that is very much expected by uh, the organizers of these global processes and would of course also help the NRIs to uh, be perceived as something very sustainable because these are intersessional processes that uh, keep an NRI into play with all the other community members in their region or in their nation. So I do think that um, if there is a stronger commitment to global processes, might that be the Global Digital Compact as we have it right now, or any other processes around our uh, common agen agenda or around our 
um, the sustainable, to, to sustainable development goals, I think this would really be something that helps every NRI to be perceived as something that is an ongoing process and more sustainable and not just an event per year. So this is, would be my recommendation. And if you would like to um, get some um, experiences from the European stakeholder consultation, I'm, I'm really happy to talk to you bilaterally and uh, just share the experiences as it is running right now. It, we will, in the Eurodic related session, we will of course also speak about uh, this stakeholder consultation. So um, I can also, um, link you to that one if you if you would like thanks thank you sandra i can i can bring the microphone to whoever ah it works now okay great and then you can whatever is easier oops you can hear me all right, um, my name is Bara Kotieno from the Kenya Internet Governance Forum. And um, speaking on the issue of uh, sustainability, I'm thinking of um, two key points for consideration by the NRIs, again, based on uh, our experience with the Kenya IGF. I think our challenges are common. And uh, when we speak of sustainability, I think it's important that uh, we consider institutional frameworks uh, that are key in uh, sustaining our national uh, or regional initiatives. And also, we need to also think of financial sustainability. Uh, when we think of institutional frameworks, there's the issue of transition from one generation to the other. How do we raise leaders or champions who will carry the agenda? Uh, and we'll also deal with different emerging issues as they arise. And then when it comes to financial sustainability, how do we leverage on the goodwill from the various actors in the community? And how do we um, remain, remain a going concern, if you may allow me to use that word? Most of the NRIs are either convening uh, IGF processes or have SIGs uh, or uh, schools of internet governance running. How do we monetize these opportunities that are of use? Looking at most of the schools of internet governance, uh, people are using the certificates that are being issued in those schools to actually get jobs or empower themselves to other levels of their livelihoods. So how do the NRIs also benefit from some of these frameworks that they are creating? That is food for thought that I want to share and I will leave at that. Thank you very much. Let's hear from Jennifer and then Wisdom and I'll see if there's somebody online and then Nazar. All right. Thank you, Anya. Um, my name is Jennifer Chung. I'm going to speak on behalf of the Secretariat for the Asia Pacific Regional IGF. I guess um, looking at sustainability, I mean, that's a very big topic that we've been discussing both in terms of the multi-stakeholder steering group within APR IGF as well as the large APR IGF community. The first thing we really looked at is, you know, every year since uh, since several, several years ago, we've had a very key output of APR IGF, which is our synthesis document. It's intended to kind of encapsulate all the highlights uh, and discussions, policy discussions and issues that we have at the meeting every year. This year, our synthesis document was just published on Friday, and we intend to have this as an input to the GDC process, which I believe is ending uh, in um, March of next year. So that's going to be one of the uh, contributions from the Asia Pacific region specifically to APR HGF. The second thing on sustainability, of course, um, our colleagues have already mentioned is funding. We've already had quite extensive discussions within um, our multi-stakeholder steering group about the sustainability of our regional IGF. There's plenty of national IGFs and sub-regional IGFs uh, within APEC who also have, you know, encountered the same issue and the same problem of funding. Um, this year, we were very, very lucky uh, to be able to be co-hosted and co-located with, um, with AP NIC, and they have been extremely generous with their support, both in terms of the you know, meeting venue as well as all of the you know, logistic issues. They've worked very closely with our community, and that also brings me to looking at it more holistically. Um, NRIs, especially regional ones and also national ones, is always a component of capacity building. We always want to, to up-level and upskill people who are new to internet governance to have them understand 
what the issues are that we discuss to have them be able to know how to contribute in a substantial way. This is not only for the youth uh, uh, IGF, which we do have, which is very, very key in our region, but also newcomers from you know all different stakeholders, all walks of life, all different ages. You can be a newcomer as a youth, you can be newcomer in your mid you know career and, and others, and they're still newcomers, and it's very important to include them as well. This year, because we co-located with APNIC, we had uh, the, the benefit of having the, the technical community take a, a closer look at what a, a regional IGF does. It's very interesting because I think there is a lot of uh, talk about how to include stakeholders that are currently missing in, uh, in, in our meetings. And I think the technical community is one such stakeholder that we really do need to involve them. They have the and expertise on the underlying systems, the underlying uh, technical uh, capabilities of the internet that we use every day. So them being interested in policy discussion is also very useful for us to learn from each other. I think it's very good for us to, to as NRIs, to look at trying to include other stakeholders, include missing stakeholders, and looking at a, at a, at a more sustainable and holistic way of capacity building and bringing in new blood and retaining this new blood. Because after you train them up, after you build their capacity, what our ideal position is to be able to have these people stay and contribute substantially to our ecosystem. So that's uh, the third part that I wanted to share. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Those are great examples of good practice. I had a pleasure to be at the APRIGF this year. It was the first time that I was uh, there. And it was, first of all, very impressive in terms of the quality of discussions, but also organization and the logistics. You no, know, Jennifer is saying that's pretty much also due to the good cooperation with uh, APNIC. Thank you. Uh, I think we said Bisban, oh, Bisban Lazar. Yeah, and, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Anja. Sure anyone yeah. online. Oh, I'm sorry, Anna, please, after Abdul Tayas. So can I go ahead? Yes, please, please. Thank you very much. My name is Wisdom, uh, Ghana IGF. Uh, just to add to uh, Barak's uh, point, I think um, our various um, national IGF, uh, especially from uh, Africa, uh, we need to be uh, kind of a re reflective of uh, the global IGF. It, it looks like we are disconnecting from the processes um, so we fi you find a situation where um, the national IGF, uh, we just do things anyhow. We don't follow the process. If you have a chair, the chair can be there forever. And then, uh, I mean, it's becoming a problem. So we need to look at this and then uh, address it. If uh, all of us as a whole can look into this and come up with maybe one common uh, charter or something like that, that everyone can adopt to suit their national IGF so that we all follow. If your term is ended, it's ended, and then we need to begin that process so that other new people that can also get the opportunity uh, to come in and as well uh, help. So I, th I think this is what uh, I have seen that we need to address, and we need to address it very quickly. Uh, not only the national IGF, uh, that includes the regional IGF uh, as well. So this is my point. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rustam. Let's have Amrita and then Nazar then Anna. Thank you, Anya. Amrita. I'm Rita Chaudhary, and I'm wearing my IGFSA hat. So um, IGFSA is going to support the NRIs in the way which we have been doing, the youth and the NRIs. Um, obviously, what we look forward from you is submitting the applications at the earliest. Uh, don't wait for four weeks before submitting. Submit it well in advance with all the information so that we can help you, you know, as much as possible uh, with all the information. So we are here to support the NRI, I, national IGFs and the youth IGFs, but please put it on time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anita. Um, Anna? Thank you.
Portuguese initiative of the IGF that we had our uh, initiative on the 3rd of November and uh, it was organized on the basis of the themes of this IGF 2022 and uh, bearing in mind that uh, it is already a preparation uh, for the global digital compact and um, uh, but and then we focus on something very very Portuguese, which is the presence of Portuguese on the internet and in language technologies and implications on internet governance. So uh, the basis the basis was the the, um, the global IGF, and then we focus on something that is very Portuguese. Uh, on the other hand, I would like to inform you that we will have we will uh, um, have our uh, Portuguese initiative. Uh, by February next year as a preparation of the Portuguese position that will be submitted uh, to the Global uh, Digital Compact uh, Open Consultation. So it will be a way to have all the stakeholders involved in the discussion and to prepare the Portuguese uh, governmental uh, um, um, response to the Open Consultation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna. Glad to hear those dynamics. So I think, I, is it Nazar that wanted? And then I have Nigel here, and then we'll go further to more. And I think that's it. <clears throat> I think, first of all, I would like to second uh, the submission by Wisdom. Um, I think that is very important because the processes also will make us, you know, grow in terms of uh, uh, the work that we are doing. For example, um, uh, Tanzania IGF has in it uh, the youth IGF component. So the, the only way we can be able to bridge the young people into this space is by making sure that, you know, we follow the uh, the processes uh, of the of the IGF, and I also second the 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 the, the point about the, you know having a, a charter that can be uh, can be a guide uh, within our own context. Um, if it is in Europe or it is in Africa, uh, it is in Asia. I think that is um, uh, is, is critical. The one million dollars question is really the sustainability of our NRIs. Um, maybe uh, in some other quarters, you might have um, you know funders who have committed year in year out to you know to help the NRIs. Um, but for those uh, of us who are receiving like uh, the intermittent, you know funders, uh, it also spells out the, the, the sort of a, a disaster for the uh, NRIs because the sustainable NRIs also depends on uh, the funding because you can't do a meeting uh, calling people, calling the government, calling all these uh, private sectors um, and the rest of the, of the multi-stakeholder without you know uh, having fun funding and i mean i'm talking about the context from 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 tanzania um if you are talking about the the igf and the picture people you know paint about the igf they think and they they think that you know igf already has money for the local uh, initiative which in most cases, that is not the case. Um, so I think the, the issue of sustainability really, uh, I do not know how we, we, we will uh, be able to, to address this locally. Um, I know there, there are big tech uh, companies that are selling a lot of products locally and they know what IGF is. So my challenge to all of us is how do we get these tech, you know, big tech companies to, to fund uh, these initiatives? Because these are important. Uh, if you go to Bolivia, you know, the IGF, um, they are, 
are a lot of wonderful things that are happening. You know, young people are understanding, I think for the first time, uh, what the policy, the ICT policy, you know, mean uh, uh, for the uh, uh, future internet. So do these big uh, tech companies see this as critical? Um, I do not know, but I, I think we need to challenge ourselves together with the secretariat um, to see how we can bring these big tech companies on board. And if we are to organize, you know, Zoom meetings or whatever, and have these people understand from our perspectives, what is it that we're trying to build locally? Um, if they are, they, 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 they are selling the product to us, where do the do their corporate uh, social responsibility monies go? If not for activities like what we are doing on the ground. For example, the NRI, Tanzania NRI, um, uh, we are working together with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the ISOP to organize um, the IGF, the youth IGF thrones 2023. This all is on behalf of the internet and the ecosystem. And internet is very important also for the, for the big tech company. That will be my, my take. I know uh, time is not on our side, but I think we need to talk to these uh, big tech companies to see where do they uh, put their corporate social responsibility money. And um, um, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Nazar. Nigel is next. Oh, you And I'll give the microphone. No, thank you very much. And uh, Nigel Hicks and I, I'm really speaking for the uh, UK, uh, UK IGF. And uh, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll be fairly brief. I think, you know, two points on sustainability. <clears throat> I think sustainability to uh, to many people in, in, in addition to funding, which I'll, I'll say something about, is, is also sustainability in terms of, of moving forward, of evolving, of having innovation in the, in the issues that you tackle, in having innovation in the stakeholders that you attract, in the organisations that you cooperate with in terms of your, your national IGF. And I, I, I think we are very conscious of this in the in in the UK, where it's 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 all too easy uh, to, if you like, fall into into the into the trap of involving the same people year after year. Uh, makes it easier to organise if you can just reach out to Fred because you know he's good at cyber security, or Alice because she's good at uh, child online protection. It's whereas what we need to be doing is, is reaching out and attracting new people, attracting new ideas. So certainly b before we uh, nominate in the UK, I say we and nom nominate uh, or sponsor the, the IGF in the UK, that's the .UK registry, but we have a multi-stakeholder committee and we do try and reach out to, uh, to, to new people. The second point on that, of course, is the is the issues that are discussed, and I think the issues that are discussed have to have relevance for the national situation. Obviously, if we have policies or legislation, and uh, we had our IGF a couple of weeks ago, and and had a very lively discussion uh, about uh, a bill going through our parliament on UK online safety, or sort of online safety, sorry, uh, and and uh, and regulations on that. So you have to, uh, I, I think, reflect what's going on, but also you have to look towards the, the global uh, situation as well. And uh, clearly, as we go forward uh, in, in over the next couple of years, the, the WISIS plus 20 review process leading to the UNGA debate in 2025 is critical for us. You know, in 2003 and 2005, when I had more hair, we stood on the ramparts and said stakeholders should be allowed into this meeting. We were stood outside the door. The UN at that time didn't allow stakeholders to participate. The IGF was not born. We've made such great strides, not just the UN IGF, but the NRI network. 
is inspiring having over 120 organizations. So we have to also take note of the global situation and make sure that that process infuses stakeholders, that the NRIs contribute to the WISIS process and also the Global Digital Compact, as mentioned. Uh, I'll, I'll stop there because I've spoken enough. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nigel. We have two interventions here from the room. We have one online. Cheryl will speak. Let's maybe hear from the room, if you don't mind, and then we'll go to Cheryl. Okay. Thank you very much, Anya. This is Emmanuel from the Togo IGF. So my thoughts regarding the challenges, I think uh, Barack started it. Um, how do we put the schools into the, I mean, uh, NRIs? Because in terms of budget, they come with uh, a lot of cost, but uh, it's difficult from the funders today to, to raise money either from AGFSA and go to use it for the school or from Andesa or other partners and use it for the school. So how do we now, because if you want to build leadership, I think we, we need to also invest into that capacity building activity so that it helps raise new leaders that can actually help in terms of sustainability when it comes to human. And um, the other point I wanted to share is in support of what Wisdom actually said, uh, sharing the best practices. Because I think from the region I'm coming from, there's still confusion. Confusion in the sense that who actually uh, organized the IGF. In some countries, it's an association. In other countries, it's maybe ISOC chapter holding the secretariat. In other countries, it's government, you know, through maybe the regulator organizing it. And the realities are, I mean, from one country to another, there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of confusion in the sense that government, for example, in some countries, are very reluctant joining the civil society when they hear that it's let's say ISOC that is organizing the IGF, they don't see that multi-stakeholder approach of it. And when it's an association, government does want to be a member of the association. So I think uh, at a point we need to actually share some best practices and come out together with the framework that can really work you know, uh, in our context. The other challenges is um, the, the change of leadership in those various organizations. So for example, in some countries, you see ISOC holding the secretariat of the IGF, and when there's a change of leadership, uh, maybe at ISOC level, it blocks the system because the new people that have been elected, it takes them time to understand the process, and sometimes, you know, uh, you can spend a whole year, you know, uh, into processes in organizing those events. And um, the last point I want to mention is uh, engagement from the UN offices, the national offices. I remember uh, last year when we organized our IGF, we involved the UNDP, the UNDP uh, office in Lome, and that was the only opportunity for the government to come out because the question is, for, usually from the government, is who and who are attending. So the moment we say, okay, the PRIDA project through the European Union delegation, they were attending, and the UNDP is attending. Then they say, okay, we are sending a speaker. But previous years, it has been always difficult if they notice that it's only civil society organizations and technical community getting together, uh, it becomes difficult. And the last, last point will be how do we measure the impact? I think it's very important. I know APC did a very good job uh, 2017 with the, how do you call it? Their report they published about the NRIs, and that has helped for most countries to actually track five year or I mean 10 year of IGF in the countries, what recommendation the government actually applied or other stakeholders were able to actually apply. So I think we need also a framework helping us to design the impact of the event that we are organizing because we come out with very good recommendations, but after five years or two years, we have to pause and actually, you know, publish those impact reports, it will also help raising funds for sustainability. Thank you. Thank you very much, Emmanuel. Maybe you can pass the microphone behind you. Somebody was requesting. And I just want to say that uh, um, in the meantime, while we're taking the floor, Elizabeth wrote to me, our colleague from the German Youth IGF, that the lunch is a little bit delayed. 
So I think you'll make it for lunch for sure. <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll in any case keep this short. So we'll try maybe to take this round of comments and then see where we are. But if you're in a rush now, we don't judge, please just leave, have your lunch. You can come back as well. Yes. Yes, always, always, yes. Okay, now we can, ah, June. Hi, hi, hello. hello everyone, I'm June Paris from Barbados. Um, I, I want to announce that the Barbados chapter is out of rejuvenation and we are ready to roll. Um, but uh, talking about fun, uh, probably my colleague mentioned some points that are very important and also Nigel, he mentioned um, bringing in the youth, um, bringing new blood into the system. The problem with bringing in new blood in is what my colleague said is that the new members are elected and then they have to train up. You have to train them up to get them um, into the system so that they can understand what's going on. And th this is why we need mentors. And this is why people, the, the older people or the more experienced people need to help these younger people because we're working on the youth um, and we're trying to bring them into the system. Um, another point I want to bring up too is that we are trying, in the Caribbean, we are trying to make changes um, recently, we held an IGF, a SIDS, CTU, which is the Caribbean Telecommunications Union, and a youth IGF. We had one IGF, and we had three sets of people participating in this IGF. So this is something that we want to bring in so that we can collaborate more. We're also trying to collaborate more with the Barbados Civil Society. Um, we all have the same um, ideas. We all have the same focus. And governments sometimes don't always agree with um, the, Barbie, the civil society. And they, um, sometimes, I don't know why, but it's difficult to collaborate with governments. So we're trying to do it from a, a different angle. We are making ourselves strong, and then we will approach government, and hopefully things will change. Thank you, June. And let's hear, this is the last comment from the room, then we're going to share online. Hello, everyone. Uh, firstly, allow me to congratulate Amrita for her election as the president of IGFSA. <clears throat> I am Mohammed Sidi Mustafa. Uh, uh, I'm talking on behalf of his IGF Africa that have been uh, initiated in 2017. So uh, there are some problems, some issues that I would like to raise uh, related to leadership problem that we have in uh, our US IGF in Africa. So I I don't want to talk more about this issue as uh, I think uh, Anya know a lot about this kind of issue. So um, firstly, I would like to say, uh, I'll talk about uh, the importance of uh, NRI. So uh, their importance is to uh, advocation uh, and uh, advocacy and uh, capacity building and then or, um, engagement. So uh, NRIs should work uh, to advocate about how youth can engage on IGF uh, work. And um, after that, they, they must to, um, to build the capacity of youth uh, in order they can know more about IGF and then they can engage about how to uh, uh, to engage on uh, IGF discussion. This is the role of IGF, which is, uh, I can say, absent in Africa, use IGF. And that's all related to uh, three main things. The first one I have been mentioned, first, the problem of leadership. And second one is related to uh, the dependent of use IGF on some or uh, some uh, uh, regional organization or uh, national IGF because when the use IGF is not free, they they cannot tell all what they can see good or see bad about use of internet or about IGF. So they must to be independent. Uh, 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 we can give them, uh, we can give youth the freedom of saying all what they think about the internet in their community. And secondly, it's related to capacity building because youth in Africa are limited 
by the means and uh, we can say tools in order to be uh, well trained about internet issue, about internet use. Also, the third thing is about the funding issue. So we have been facing this kind of challenges since the launch of USIGF in 2017 until today. So um, uh, I call upon partners of IGF that they can support the US IGFs. It's not, it's not only on Africa, but in all over the world. So US can engage in an early age about the work of IGF and, on, uh, uh, and they can participate on IGF meetings. Thank you. Thank you very much. And let's please now hear from Cheryl, who is online with us, I believe, from Australia. Cheryl, you have the floor. I see you're still muted. Ah, can I ask the technicians to unmute Cheryl Langdonor? Just colleagues at the back. Okay, now now we should be able to hear you, Cheryl. Welcome has been found. <laughs> Thank you very much. I uh, appreciate that, Anya. Uh, Cheryl langdon from uh, the Australian NRI, Net Thing. Um, we actually just uh, finished not long ago on the 27th and 28th of last month, our uh, annual event. Um, and a lot of what's been said today is resonating uh, very strongly with our um, review of and discussion on next steps as to where we're heading in the year to come. Um, we have a, a multi-stakeholder organising committee and we try very hard to make sure that it is multi-stakeholder. Uh, in other words, that if there is a sector that is not represented, um, that we do our best to make sure we have um, uh, that sector sought out and, and, and bought in. It's open, um, so people may join, um, but we do try and keep um, that core balance going. Now, to some of Pedro's points and to some extent what's also been sent from, um, um, from the Caribbean and indeed the UK, um, we've worked rather hard to make sure that in our MSG and therefore in the overall planning of our events, note the plural there, because we're going to be doing more and more that is not just a, a big two-day thing, but also what we would call intercessional things of a smaller nature, um, that we do have experience and we do have big hitters um, because they're the people who, A, can provide us with the funding and, and in-kind support. Um, for example, on our MSG, we, we have APNIC. Um, and that means we can use the resources, for example, of, of the Zoom and uh, streaming facilities uh, that they kindly offer us as, uh, as uh, technical support in kind. Um, we have worked hard over recent times to make sure that we have the right people um, in the right positions in our federal government. Um, I don't mean the elected individuals, but the uh, the ones that are, are working within the departments, so that it's the same people that are uh, attending our planning meetings uh, and therefore have a finger on the pulse of what an IGF in Australia will look like and what the topics might be, and indeed what the speakers, fresh and familiar, um, that we can attract, um, that they're also the same people that are you know, going off to ITU meetings and will be representing the country in all things internet and indeed telco. So it's it's not easy. It's not going to be the same for all of us. We do have to work it to suit our own communities. Um, but the other thing I wanted to mention is um, we've developed in recent years now a stronger and stronger support based um, relationship with our CCTLD operator um, and uh, AUDA is, is in a position now of being what I would consider um, our key financial um, supporter um, and that has allowed us to uh, retain the services of some rather more professional 
uh, planners for events. Um, and that also helps to make sure that we're not just doing the same old stuff with the usual suspects, um, but putting things out for wider public input and getting refresh and new in as well. I could go on longer, but we have other meetings through the week, so I won't stand any longer between you and your lunch. Um, but it is important, I think, to make sure that the planners are also a mix of uh, the fresh and the familiar, because it's often the familiar that simply have the connections and the resources um, to get the job done. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cheryl. Um, let me see. I think, uh, if you don't mind, we have Julian in the Zoom room that would like to make an intervention. Then we'll have here Poncelet. I don't know if anyone else. And then we're going to slowly wrap up. There's still ah, Lito, yes. Lito, and then we're going to wrap up to see what are our next steps and organize another informal meeting of the NRIs during the side year, whoever can join. So uh, please, Julian, you have the floor after Julian Poncelet. I see you are unmuted, but I don't think the audio is projecting here in the room. Can can Zoom participants hear Julian? He was unmuted. Ah, okay. Can you unmute, please, Julian again? Julian Casas Buenas. Colleagues in the background. I see. Julian, now you're unmuted. We still cannot hear you, Julian. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, perfect. Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Julian Casas Buenas. I'm on behalf of the Colombian IGF. And um, uh, I believe that uh, we have been uh, facing several uh, challenges uh, related uh, to the sustainability, sustainability of the, our processes. And um, I think they are, our current ones uh, are related to bringing new actors, including youth, and also to bring uh, into the uh, local IGFs, um, high level representatives, uh, in order to try to influence uh, public policies that uh, are related to the stability of the internet, uh, as well as um, uh, keeping the link with the global IGFs. I think that, um, uh, for instance, the collaborative uh, uh, sessions uh, that uh, we are um, participating uh, uh, in the global IGF are very important also to make uh, these links with the local to to the to the global uh, IGF and uh, making this also possible to enhance the participation of uh, multi stakeholders in our case uh, this year we included uh, new uh, uh, topics in the discussions which I believe it's uh, important as well, like data processing and artificial intelligence and digital identity, as well uh, as uh, new challenges of emerging digital technologies in their uh, implementation in, in Colombia and the internet ecosystem. And uh, listening to all of you and also in our case in the um, process of the LAC IGF, it's also important to uh, find new ways to uh, um, uh, find new ways to 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 get uh, ideas for the sustainability of uh, all this process. Thank you. Thank you very much, Julian. Uh, before I give the floor to uh, Poncelet, uh, I've just noticed, and thank you also to my colleagues for flagging. In this room, in addition to the NRI coordinators, there are a few members of parliaments from uh, several African countries, and I want to especially thank you for coming here. That's the first step of a good cooperation uh, with those that can make concrete decisions and those that hold very specific set of expertise on a multi-stakeholder level for good decisions to be made. So thank you. Ponselet, please, you have the floor.
Thank you. Um, Pong Sloyd from the um, NRI Gambia, but I'm speaking in my capacity as um, chairperson of the EC8 African Tax Force. Um, just to address the young man that spoke on um, the African IGF, the, the, the ECA walked after the African IGF in Lulongwe in Malawi, in which um, a committee was um, created, which I chaired that committee, and we have 80 youths that we brought from different parts of the continent. All these African youths that you see volunteering at the gates, they were all trained on the AU PRIDA platform. They are repertoires, they are communication people, they are conferencing, they are technical. So a process has started to capitalize, and all of them are between 18 and 30. So in any room you go here today, you see them with ECA volunteer shirts. They were volunteers that were trained by us. We have Wisdom here, who is also in the tax force that leads the, um, what do you call it, um, co um, technical committee within this tax force. So I, I just want to mention, to address your question, don't think things are not being addressed. You won't have 50 young people coming from other parts of Africa, from each region was represented. There's no region that you don't have an African youth here. And we have 30 utopians, and we also have the lo local organizing committee volunteers all here. So there's work in progress and you'll be hearing more of a stronger secretariat by the new chair of the African IGF, um, Lillian. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ponsalet, and I hope that the future host countries will follow your example. Uh, Litho, please, you have the floor. Hello, yes, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Lito Ibarra from El Salvador, one of the coordinators of uh, our local IGF. I want to address three topics. Uh, one of the funding is not only large enterprises that may provide funding, but uh, as Nigel was mentioning, in our cases, uh, always is also the case, the local CCTLD can be a, a good uh, supporter. By definition, the CCTLDs are at the core of the internet in each country because they run the, the domain names and they are usually one of the first institutions to be uh, in place when internet um, uh, comments uh, starts in every country. So I guess some of them at least will be willing to participate and to support the local IGF. Second, regarding the topics to be innovative uh, in the new topics. In our case, we included this year uh, topics act as blockchain. Uh, if you know it, El Salvador is one of the few or maybe the only country that uh, by law has, besides the dollar, the Bitcoin as a national currency. So um, that did, this started a lot of uh, fussing around blockchain as technology. So we had two talks in our IGF uh, last month on uh, blockchain being used for for other things, not only cryptocurrency, but al also other uses of the technology. And third, regarding new people, bringing new people, we um, try with two very young uh, ladies in El Salvador with two topics. One one of them selected avatars, like a, like a, a, a topic that it, it will be uh, more common when the metaverse is around is fully around so uh, we found that very interesting and that was proposed by her and we had that new topic a new uh, lady new person uh, as a speaker in an IGF the other one didn't didn't go so well but we tried so we, one of two is not so bad so uh, it's it's uh, worth trying new people new topics and uh, new schemes of doing the IGF. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lito. I think we said with Lito we're gonna conclude. I see three hands here. I'll give the floor. I am fine staying here, but I know that the other participants would like to have lunch. As I said, please be free to, uh, to walk out. Um, I think online we don't have any comments. Let's keep the three comments very, very brief. Uh, I will not go into summarizing because the summary will follow on the list and I'm sure you will still make it for lunch. So, uh, Roberto, briefly, Peter King, and Bangladesh, yes, yes, thank you. Or not. No, 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 thank you. 
Very brief. Yeah, I just wanted to comment about sustainability regarding some other opportunities. It's important to, to, re, uh, to repeat again that uh, in case of internet society, actually is one of the good sources that we have because usually they had a fund provided to different projects, but now internet society is providing a special fund for, for this kind of initiative. So it's $3,500, which is also important and complements the possibility to, to help us organize in our events. The, the only thing is that Usually the, the chapters are involved in the original uh, processes, but in the cases of the ISO chapter is not, it's, it would be good to start an alliance with them so they can be involved. And the last thing I want to comment is about our experience, recent experience about the linkage between our local NRIs with the regional NRI. We didn't have this kind of linkage before. Uh, we participated, but we didn't, we weren't so much involved in, in the process and now we had a chance to work together there are some great colleagues that are following online and some some others are present here and we we arrange a very nice space in the local igf in the i mean in the lack igf and we had a lot of contributions so i think it's a very good way to go also in the terms of uh, sustainability thank you Angela. thank you very much uh, roberto Peter King, very briefly, then we'll go to uh, Inu Bangladesh and we're going to conclude. Thank you. My name is Peter King for the records from the Libra IGF. We just want to take this opportunity to thank the IGF Secretary for this year's support to the Libra IGF. We've been uh, having the event as a multi stakeholder platform from since 2020. We are now 2022. This year we had a very good I mean, participation in terms of concentrating on three areas, which is content direction. We look at also the branding and communication process that will help to attract the interest of all multi-stakeholders in the country. We also look at the level of participation that we have to open it online and people who are more engaged on online platform. We had over 1,000 people applying. We believe that with this kind of measure in place, all the NRI can adopt it to increase participation. And we also look at the level of participation in terms of diversity in I mean, academia, youth, government, and other people that will come to the table to bring issues of national concern. And the last one is the level of funding. We believe that there is more work to be done locally as an NRI to enable you to get local I mean, funding because it helps to bring these, part, these um, partners to the table, as well as mostly the MNOs, they have issues that they want government to hear. The regulator need to hear about it. So once you partner with them locally, able to come and address issues and who's supposed to help them in addressing their issue can also come so this is our experience and we are so grateful for all um, partners that help the library igf to move this year we believe that the trend now was good and we want to be able to be consistent in terms of how to host the event in liberia thank, thank you. you thank you very much peter king uh anu please and then i'll give the conclusion to barack uh, thank you, Anya. This is Mohammad Abdullah Konu from Bangladesh IGF. Uh, we are creating uh, Bangladesh IGF 2006. Now we are uh, 2017. We are started Bangladesh School of Internet, uh, and then uh, 2000. Last two years we are organizing Youth IGF and Women IGF. This year we are also creating Kids IGF. Also, uh, we are uh, challenging the resources fund. Fund is very problem. And uh, another uh, challenge is the local resource uh, in terms of our emerging technology issue. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Anu. With that, Barak, you said you have a way forward coined already. Please. Yes, thank you. I just wanted to propose for consideration by the NRIs. Probably we develop a course, it could be capacity building, maybe with the support of IGFSA on uh, institutional frameworks for national and regional initiatives, and also something around financial sustainability. It's a broad area, but I think if we get together into some uh, and uh, get some knowledge around this, we should be able to know how to mobilize resources better. So that's the proposal I wanted to submit in conclusion. Thank you very much. And I see there's already support for this. And uh, so the report with concrete action points, including this proposal on which we will need to hear from other NRIs as well, will follow uh, as soon as possible because I'm drafting and it's a little bit busy here. And then we will continue our discussions. 
I want to now uh, conclude the session because I'm sure you have other commitments. The lunch is still on, so you can go to have lunch. Oh, I see. Can we see the Bangladesh Remote Hub on the screen, please? And if there is a question, please ask the question. After we hear from the Bangladesh Remote Hub, we will uh, finalize this. And we have our WhatsApp group, so I'll be also free to write there. Maybe we can organize some informal gathering during this week, maybe during evening hours. And we certainly will see each other uh, across five NRI yeah, yeah. collaborative sessions and our NRI's main session, which is on Friday. So quick visual from the Bangladesh Remote Hub and you please walk toward the lunch area. The lunch is still on. That's what I've been told. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a question that how we can uh, develop ourselves to contribute NRI, especially Bangladesh IGM community. I, that's thank you very much and uh, greetings to the to the Bangladesh Hub from Addis. I think the that's what I always say when somebody asks me. I think the first point of contact are the NRI coordinators. We are very fortunate to be in an environment that is very very friendly and there are resources which will explain to you and guide you how to be engaged. Many of the NRIs do have a particular capacity development tracks, such as for young people or newcomers and so on. Those are excellent opportunities to be engaged. That would be my advice. I do invite the remote hub to write to the NRI mailing list to ask concrete questions where to be engaged. And I'm sure responses from relevant NRIs will follow. So with that, bon appetit. Please have lunch. Thank you very much. See you on the NRI collaborative session on Wednesday. Thank you. Yeah, how are you?